Imagine that you have a horrible job, one which you just love doing. Would you quit or would you stay? These two actions have a possibility for things to go extremely wrong. These two actions have a probability of a risk. So we wanted to know what actually happens in the brain when we find ourselves in such a situation and how do we overcome the daunt of risk. To start off, let's define risks. A very simple definition of risks is a situation involving exposure to danger. Today we are here to explain the neurological changes which occur in the brain when we are in a risky or dangerous situation. In other words, our key topic for today is to explain the science behind taking risks. So let us start with this. Do you know which part of the brain is especially active when we are in a risky or dangerous situation? Well, I asked my parents, they didn't seem to know either. and I would be surprised if you know too. The answer is the amygdala. The amygdala, according to Science Daily, is an almond-shaped set of neurons located deep inside the brain's medial temporal lobe. It is responsible for detecting fear and preparing for events in extreme situations. It is a reason we are afraid of things that are outside our control. It also controls the way we react to certain stimuli or an event that causes an emotion we see as potentially dangerous or threatening. To give proof on how the amygdala works, numerous scientists have conducted researches on rats. They've taken out the amygdala of the rat using a technique called deep lesioning. Once the amygdala of the rat was removed, the rats were said to have no fear of anything, even cats. The loss of the amygdala had taken away the rat's memory of fear. To give an example, when I was around 7 years old, I saw this massive dog right in front of me. I knew I should just stand still or walk away quietly, but instead I turned around and I sprinted off. The dog chased me and eventually bit me. <laughs> the point is that the amygdala was what had made me go into the wrong direction and run. The size of the amygdala also determines the amount of fear you experience in a certain situation. This is the reason some people might feel confident in their views, while others may just run scared. It is a shame we cannot control this biological aspect of ours. Lastly, another source of tolerance is the number of dopamine inhibiting receptors. A fewer amount of these receptors means a higher tolerance to risk. But the ultimate question is, why take risks in the first place? The answer for this is simple. The reason for this is that a lot of opportunities will be missed. Opportunities to improve will go to waste. In life, people must understand that without taking risks, they might not be able to achieve what they want to in life. Granted, they might fail at first, but the end result will be extraordinary if they don't give up. So, what would life be like without taking risks? We'd probably be stuck in the dark ages for a very long time. You might not realize, but there's a good chance you wouldn't have had the rights you have today. For example, Lily Ledbetter, she worked for Goodyear and sued the company for giving her less pay than her male co-workers. She lost the case, but was one of the main figures who tried to get equal pay for both men and women. Think of Rosa Parks. On December 1st, 1955, she was on the Cleveland Avenue bus going home. This bus was segregated, where the white people sat at the front and the African Americans at the back. On this day, a white man entered the bus. Since there were not enough seats in the white people area, Rosa Parks was asked to give up her seat and let the man sit instead. She refused to do so and was arrested. And as her famous quote says, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. She was tired of giving in to white people all the time. They bullied her just because of her skin color, and she stood up for herself and all African Americans in general. Now, I know that there are some students and children in this audience. We were absolutely not recommending you to break the law. Though, look at the outcomes of these events. Lady Ledbetter, she fought for equal pay for both men and women. Rosa Parks, she fought for the rights of the African Americans. But the question is, how do you learn to take risks? You have to understand that it's very difficult to make yourself do something that you're afraid of doing. The brain is programmed for you to run away from something that might scare you. You want to be able to think of the positive thought rather than a negative one. It might feel difficult at first, because whenever you go towards a positive thought, there's always an, if this happens, what will I do after it? If, you're a, if you ever find yourself in such a situation, you should close your eyes and think of the positive thought rather than the negative. Give the positive thought a greater importance rather than the negative one. And once you start to drift off to the negative thought, say no and have control of your brain. Go back to that positive thought which you were having. Think about 
what do you want to do and question each thought you have. And if this doesn't match your aim, change it into something positive. Force your brain to go towards the positive thought rather than a negative one. Ask yourself this every time. And after a while, you should get into the habit of going towards the positive thought. It's really sad to see nowadays that people are held back because they're afraid to take risks. This just reinforces their fear. People can achieve so much more by just taking risks. To conclude, by taking risks, you can gain a lot in life. And as William Faulkner said, you cannot swim for new horizons until you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. Thank, Thank you. you.